had discovered that Tessa Alexandra Vandernoot did not want to do more than a few shows in season two, that she wanted to go back to Belgium or Paris and her new husband, boyfriend, family, whatever. And after I went into mourning, we uh, had her rewrite her out, which was um, uh, troublesome. Um, and um, I felt like a jilted lover, to tell you the truth. She was popular. She was beautiful. And she was, she was a wonderful actress. They were great together. Yep, they were. Heat. But, um, you know, I think that for her, I think, guess she looked at the part and looked at her career and said, you know, um, this show is about Duncan MacLeod of the Clan MacLeod. He is the Highlander. It's not the Highlander and Tessa. And I think a small part of her, being a really strong actress, wanted to play a more um, aggressive part in the show. And sadly, the nature of the beast was that couldn't happen. And she made a decision. That was always that was also the case in the movies. It was always an issue of as wonderful as the women were was how how do you have the woman be something other than uh, a victim, a hostage, all the things that when you're dealing with an immortal hero, it's not so easy. Right, week after, and especially week after week after week after week, it becomes difficult. So she made a choice, and uh, we made it work, which was. Um, a bit heartbreaking. Um, and I remember um, when we talked about how we were going to um, have her die. And um, it was interesting because we wanted it to be a surprise and how shocking it was to us when she died at the end of the, at the, end of the episode, a victim of street violence in the middle of an episode where she was actually saved and it would have been easier to kill her off in the episode. And we, we did it um, through random street violence. Which was cool, though, because the idea is that it, it's not an immortal event. It's just a comment on this is what life is like. And after all of the Sturm und Drang that right. happened in the episode to her and all that stuff, it's finally over, she's finally cool, everything's terrific, and wham. Right. She and Richie get killed. Right. And Richie comes back. And Richie comes back. Which we have uh, kind of laid... We laid some pipe for that in the first episode of season one, but we hadn't really decided whether we were going to make him immortal or not make him immortal. We right. Just like a, a one-liner, you better watch him or whatever the line was back in the in season one, and right. uh, this seemed like the moment to do that. It's really sad to me to, to have Tessa die, um, and uh, and made the fans really angry. So it's good to have an opportunity to say that it wasn't wasn't totally our choice. The, the actress had something to do with it also. The Tracy Lord's character, you know, who was, uh, was basically a... She was based on the character of um, sort of like Whoopi Goldberg was in Ghost. Right, somebody who was a kind of pretend psychic. Yeah, she was a charlatan with the real gift. Um, and was interesting in casting of Tracy Lord's, who uh, came out of adult movies. Um, but really had some acting chops and had a certain vulnerability on the screen that I thought was really quite good. And there was, I remember the difficulty in, um, in shooting it. Sometimes you write something in a script and you think it's going to be easy to do, and that was that they fight in this black room and how impossible it was to, to build a black room, to create the black room, because it had a fit, because it was like half a day, and it had a fit next to an exterior location, and the only interior that there was had a lot of windows. So instead of just being in a studio where it's just black anyway, we had to take and black out all the windows, and it consumed an enormous amount of time, which allowed us to not be able to shoot the James Bond, two women gypsies having a cat fight over Duncan MacLeod in the flashback, that we had wanted to do, but because we couldn't do it, it had to be rewritten, so it was just one cranky woman and done. With an adder. You know, it all seems, it all seems so easy <laughs> when, you're at your, uh, when you're at the word processor. You just write it in, and, uh, and someone else has to do it. It's one of the magical things about writing. Then you actually get to the location, and you actually have to make it work. And the director and the live producer look at you with uh, 
with daggers in their eyes and says, saying, um, who is the jerk who wrote this? And you turn around and you go, you look over your shoulder and you try to find them and you realize it was you. It you, could, know. you know, it could be worse. You could be working for a living. That's true. Absolutely, positively. But I always thought working for you was working for a living. <laughs> <laughs>